joined by Billy Flynn who of geekradiodaily.com Dang. Um, who is a insane Doctor Who fan. Okay. Um, cuz you 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 bring a passion to it that I don't always see. I mean, you're very passionate about it. I mean, the panels we've been on together, <laughs> the episodes I've had you on in the background where you can't be seen. Um, <laughs> they just need I, to hear me, that's all. Yeah, I mean, no, you bring a lot to it. I mean, you're probably about as passionate about Doctor Who as I am, in a lot of ways. It's, it's huge. I mean, um, I'm from the 70s. So I do remember, very, for a very small amount of time, I remember a world before Star Wars, and then there was a world of Star Wars. Yes. So from then, of course, anything space or whatever I was into. You know, Battlestar Galactica, the original, of course. I'm watching it because I'm like, but you, but you, stuff is blowing up, it's awesome. Um, in the fifth grade, I was in the fifth grade uh, living, wow, outside of Goldsboro, North Carolina, and the local in Raleigh, WPTF, the PBS station. <laughs> PBS, of course. Yep, PBS, of course, and this, this, is, this is a huge deal. You know, one day, boom, there's this guy. And he's got this box, and it's a time machine, and he's got a robot dog, and this this was awesome. I'm like, what the hell is this? And started watching. It was on every night, uh, Saturday, uh, from Monday through Friday. Oh, you actually had it on at night. It was on Monday through Friday, six to seven, two episodes. Wow, and that's awesome. And on Saturday, four episodes yes. in a row. Yes. And this was this was crazy. It was insane. I instantaneously fell in love with this, and. You know, Boo just devoured, and of course, Tom Baker was my doctor because okay. it was PBS. Well, when you said when you said K nine, right? I mean, it up. had to be obvious. Yeah. Uh, you know, because that's what it was. Most most American kids in the eighties, we got our Tom Baker first, so that's what it was. I've told you before; you've heard it. Yeah. When he died, when he regenerated, I had no idea because there was no internet. I know. We knew nothing. I knew nothing about this show, and nobody knew. There was like one guy at school. Yeah. There's this one guy, yeah. uh, Chris Humphreys. I still remember him because he was the only other guy. He's like, yeah, Doctor Who. Yeah, man. Yeah. I'm like, well, that, yeah, yeah. He's like, what is this? He's like, yeah, he goes around. He turns eventually. Like, yeah, this is cool. And then the day when he died, when, and he turns into Peter Davis, and I was just, I was kind of horrified. I was like, what? In the next episode, there's this new guy, and they're still saying that it's him. And I'm like, no! It's not him! <laughs> and, I, and I got mad. And, and I, I stopped watching for a couple of months. I just Really? I did. I shit you not. I was like, no! That, that was the guy. I blah, blah, blah. One random Saturday afternoon, flipping through stuff, because there was not a, lot of, there was not a lot of channels, kids. Yeah. Oh, dear God, there's not a lot of channels. And then I was mesmerized, because he was like, Next, Doctor Who, The Five Doctors. I was about to ask you about The Five Doctors. And I'm like, what? And so then I get to see everybody preceding yeah. Baker. Baker in a time loop, for the love of Jesus. And Davison, and I'm like, wow, wait, there's so much more about this that I just had no effing clue of. And, you know, I'm back into it. And yeah. occasionally they would show some of the older ones and yeah. stuff. But the important thing about Doctor Who and why I love it is because, you know... I call myself a geek. I'm a geek. Well, Jesus Christ, I'm dressed in steampunk right yes, now. Yes, you are. Fantastic. Um, I'm a geek primarily because of Doctor Who. Star Wars and Star Trek were all, you know, Star Trek yeah. was always on TV. They would have the cartoons. Star Wars was amazing. That's what really got me space and space stuff. Yeah. Doctor Who on PBS. Well, I was like, well, damn. Because PBS before, it was always the nature or, so or Sesame yeah. Street. So I'm like, well, what else do these guys have? Well, my PBS station also... Showed the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes. Which is how I discovered Douglas Adams. Yes. They showed Monty Python's Flying Circus. Yes. Which is another... Because there are plenty of people who like Star Wars. Yeah, oh yeah. The jocks even like Star Wars. That's true. 
but none of them really ever went on and found other other stuff. Yeah. And everything else I ever found is really all it it all was through Doctor Who. Yeah. Without that, I don't know what else I would have found. So yeah, you know, trying to go back in those days, especially to see old episodes. Yeah. Whatever they had is all you could watch. That was it. Yeah. I mean, the closest thing you had to reruns were the novels. <laughs> I mean, that that was it. That, that was it. Or or the video or the like ninth generation VHS before they started releasing them over here. I mean, it was tough to see the old stuff. And you know, if you were lucky, you know, you found somebody like, yeah. oh yeah, I saw the, and they would tell you about these episodes. You're like, oh my god, I would love to see that. Yeah. Like the the Dalek invasion of Earth, I heard about it. Oh, that, and that's such an important before episode. Before I ever saw it, I you know I'm saying I'm mesmerized. I'm like, ooh in my mind, and I'm ooh and I'm. Well, well, the five Doctors, because when I was a kid, I didn't realize that that opening shot with the first Doctor Hartnell, he wasn't the same guy that we saw in the uh, in I, the actual episode. I didn't I didn't real I didn't put that together. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I mean, I was really young. He, you know, he looked enough. He was an yeah. old white guy. He looked. I, I know, and that speech he gave from Dialogue Invasion of Earth. That's yes, yes. That's the that's the last line he says to Susan before he leaves oh. and pans her to, with some guy named David. <laughs> just, I'm just, I'm just gonna leave her behind. Oh, uh, and and it's awesome that it's come mm -hmm. back though. That's the beautiful thing. Doctor was out there so long. The Fox TV mm -hmm. movie. Yes. You know, they said they're going to do it, and, and uh, you know, what was it, 95, 96? Yeah. About, that was about the time of the 30th anniversary. Yep, uh, just in time for that, and I'm like, yeah. um, okay, because Doctor Who, Fox, with Eric Roberts! <laughs> okay, <laughs> why not? You know, and it starts off, so it's just Sylvester McCoy's there, yeah. there's the legitimacy. Yeah, and that really blew me away when I saw that. You know, he's sitting there, and he's sipping, he's having tea, and he's coming back from yeah. the final battle with the Master. I'm like, I'm totally on board. I don't care what anybody else in the world is thinking right yeah. now. I'm so with this. And, um, yeah, the Doctor's half-human and stuff. Yeah. They, they, they retconned it later in the yeah, books and stuff. Thank, thank God, because I just I never bought that. That, that I think that's the one that bothered me the most. But you know what the funny thing about the TV movie was? Do you know who the only person in that movie that was a fan of Doctor Who I uh, Eric Roberts. Yes, Eric Roberts. He was the only one that was a fan of the show. I mean, <laughs> McGann knew it, and you know he knew Sylvester really well, so they were really happy to work together. Right. But the only one that was actually a diehard fan was Eric Which Roberts. Which is hysterical because Doctor Who fans completely blast Eric yeah. Roberts. But I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? He's if he had the mustache, he would have been twirling it. Oh, he definitely. was chewing scenery like mad. Yeah. He was having fun. I mean, I, I'm glad I, I bought that not too long ago and rewatched it. And honestly, it's not a bad it episode. Isn't. It really isn't. It's no. just, you know, we, it had been so long since we'd had anything Doctor yeah. Who. And, oh, Fox is going to bring Fox is gonna bring a bigger budget Doctor Who to TV? Jesus, okay. And you know it's what's, not as bad as episode one. No. But, but we you, couldn't have lived up to you, expectations. You know the interesting thing about that was? It was actually the highest, the second highest rated thing shown that night. It went up against the World Series. Yes. And that's the only thing... It would have had the, the top ratings if it wasn't for that. I thought that was pretty impressive, you know, bringing this British property over, <laughs> done by Fox, and it's still hit number two. Yeah. But and nobody ever even mentions that fact. No. Everyone wants to say that it was a complete misfire and a complete, complete travesty, complete waste of time. No, it wasn't. No. There was a lot of good stuff in there. Did it need some tweaking? Well, sure. Oh, of course. What does it? Yeah, exactly. What does it? And, and it's really interesting that Fox went on, especially right after that, to do these things like, uh, they had all these TV shows, sci-fi that they were going to yeah. do, they showed as TV movies, like a White Dwarf was one that I don't even remember. I just remember that um, What's-His-Face from Eureka and the Brother Who Fell to Earth put on like these surgical gloves that could reach into people's bodies. That's all I remember about that damn thing, but it was supposed to be this other... Fox, oh god, was that really it? Was that where Fox and, and creative sci-fi really started? Yeah, I, I, I think so, because I mean, but of course, you know, Fox, if they don't see a, a, a turnover right away in any of their sci-fi stuff, they cancel it. I mean, look what they did Firefly. <laughs> oh, God. God of mercy. So, when Doctor Who comes back, yes. and we get the Eccleston stuff, I refuse to watch it on sci-fi, because I'm not used to seeing my Doctor Who with commercials. I know! I'm sorry! It's just not done that way. No, That's it not how no. it's done. It is a... So, you know, I got the special antenna going um, yes. for those episodes. And, uh, you know, and for my wife, I'm like, oh my God, because 
My wife was not a geek when I met her. Really? She that is really hard to believe. Not a geek when I met her. And uh, her turning point was Lord of the Rings. Really? We're sitting in the freaking Springfield Mall. Seriously. Springfield Mall food court watching uh, mall TV. Yeah. And we're sitting there having some food, and, and the trailer comes on. And she's looking at this going, oh, I don't think so. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, no, I'm going to see that. Why? Well, that just looks too scary. I'm like, no, uh, this is Lord of the Rings. <laughs> no. That's like, funny. What do you mean? So I got her to go see the movie. Yeah. So we go see, we go see Fellowship. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and there's the end of the movie. And there's Mordor in the distance. Yeah. And then the credits start rolling. And three people and her go, wait, what? And I'm like, I told you going in, this is a trilogy. Okay? I told you this is one story. So, uh, two days later, we went and bought all three books, and she had them read in a week. Wow. And boom, boom. That, that, after that, just, well, what other kind of stuff do you got? Oh, well, there's this, there's this. Hell, after that, she even would willingly watch Mystery Science Theater 3000. Days. <laughs> That's funny. And so, so the Doctor Who thing, I'm like, no, no, you're going to love this. And so we sit down, watch it together, and... I loved that first episode with Eccleston because Rose, Rose yes, was she became a horrible person later. But 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 for that first episode, <coughs> me as a longtime fan, yeah. I'm totally up to speed. But her as a new person, she's kind of identifying going with Rose, like what she's trying to solve the yeah. mystery too. And I loved that. Yeah. I loved that there's these internet people of all this that have seen this blue box yeah. and people with pictures and shit. And I was like. Oh my god, this is... I never thought of this. Of course people wouldn't start noticing this. Yeah. So we're watching this, and she's like, what? And, uh... You know, we get to the Dalek episode, yeah. and you're walking through the museum, and there's, like, a Cyberman. Yes! And, like, and I'm just like, oh my god! Yeah. And he gets, and you hear the voice, and it's the same yeah. voice. Well, that was the first episode where we actually realized they were going to connect to the old series. Because mm -hmm. up until that... And cause it there could have been. Because even though we, we had the internet during that time... Who wasn't big on the internet? No. So you still didn't get a lot of spoilers or knew what was going on. And that was the first episode that connected back to Classic Who. I mean, and it was just like, wow. I'll never forget the episode come, it comes on and there's the title. And, and I just, inside, just chit chit. Yeah. I, was, I was like, what? And she goes, what's a Dalek? And I'm like, <laughs> Just watch. Yeah. Just just watch. And yeah, because yeah. before they had the box, they had the sound. Stuff sounded right. Yeah. Sonic screwdriver. Exactly. You know, it was it was <coughs> all. It was, but that moment, you're like, yeah, yeah wow, they're they're doing it. That was our reconnection. And and <laughs> wow, it was such a beautiful. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. And and this whole time, first episode, she absolutely loved it. And like, thankfully. I let the special antenna build up like four episodes. Yes. <laughs> like, okay. yes. So now we're all, oh my god, now we're waiting. And like, okay, no new Doctor Who, let's go. Click, get it. So um, <laughs> I thought I, it was really weird to see that they sort of did a year-long storyline when you found out that the bad wolf had actually been showing up. Oh my up. god, that was so brilliant. Right? You're like, what? Like, <laughs> wait, <laughs> go back and watch this bad... Didn't, it, didn't I see yes. the bad wolf on something last week? Yes. Okay, uh... And then, you know, you had the silliness of, you know, the, uh, what is it, uh, the awful, awful show, You're Fired, you, you know, what is the quiz show? Oh, um... With Anne, what's her face? Weakest Link! Link. Yeah, Weakest Link. Like, yeah. this thing made that work. Because when they shot Rose and she turned, I was like, whoa, when is yeah. that going to happen? And then that season, that season finale. Yeah! That season finale. Wow! Um, wow. I, I will never forget this. I will never forget. I'm sitting there watching it, and the bells. Yeah. The cloister bells you know, are going off. I love the cloister bells. And and when that happened, I was like, oh. And, and she looks to me and goes, what? And I'm like, and I just looked and I went, I'm so sorry. Yes. I am so sorry. I had no idea. She's like, what? And I'm like, just, 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 let's just go. And then, and he says goodbye to her. She's yeah. like, what, what, is he dying or something? And I'm like, just keep yes. watching. And then he does this transformation. Yeah. Oh, I always wanted to be a ginger. Yeah. And, and and the show goes off, and she's just looking at me like, what's going on? <laughs> what, what is I this? I wish I could have seen that. You know, and, I'm, and this is when I'm like, well, how much do you want to know? Which yeah. is like, well, I guess a lot. Let's find out. And now the internet yes. has so much information, so I'm like, let me show you something. Yeah. Let me remind you, the Doctor Who's been on since the 60s. And then... 
eight other people have played him. Let me show you. Yes. And like, Blam. And she's like, what? Like, yeah, these guys are all the same yes. person. But they're you know, younger, oh, okay, sure, but they're the same guy. Yeah. Here's the deal. He's a Time Lord. And the best way to keep this story going is have him regenerate. He's still the same guy. He's a little different. Yes. But it's the same guy. She's like, what? And it's hysterical because at first, the first Tenet episode, yeah. which had very little of Tenet in it. Which was the Christmas special. Um, she really wasn't impressed with Tenet. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Right? I, I totally agree. But, uh, you know, it didn't take that many episodes afterwards. She's like, oh, she's totally in love with David Tennant. And yeah. here, where David Tennant broke a cardinal Doctor Who rule. Your first Doctor is your Doctor. Except for people that started with Christopher Eccleston. <laughs> yes! I fucking hate that. <laughs> I hate that, that Christopher Eccleston gets the short shaft on all of this. It bugs the hell out of me. Um, flashing forward just a little bit, though. Yeah. Um, my mom, four years ago or so, my mom was in the hospital. Yeah. Big thing, so I'm at home. It's my dad and I were there. Sitting on my on the computer desk, my dad has a stack of, of the Christopher Eccleston season of Doctor Who. And I'm like, what are you doing with this? And my dad's like, oh, uh, I've got a friend of mine at work gave it to me. I'm like, yeah, but what are you doing with this? <laughs> like, what do you mean? I'm like, it's Doctor Who. He's like, yeah. I'm like, you watch Doctor Who? He goes, I watched it with you when you watched it. Like, I didn't know you were paying attention to it. <laughs> That's awesome. So my dad, without my intervention at all, sought out Dr. Yeah. Who from somebody else because it's a guy, oh, 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 I remember that. My son used to watch yes. that. So I watched, got to watch Rose yeah. with him. And after the first episode, I'm like, what do you think? He's like, well, he reminds me of the guy that I that used yeah. to watch. So we watched, uh, you know, we watched the first three Ecclestones yeah. and went to sleep. And uh, you know, since then it's awesome because he still watches it. That's great. He, BBC America, he'll watch it. I can't tell you the number of Christmases I've been at home with my wife, with my dad, with my kids, and we're all sitting in the living room watching Doctor Who together. That's awesome. Uh, it's it's it multi generational. Is, it certainly is. It is yeah. such a part of my life. It is. Crazy, because for as big an impact as Star Wars had on my life, like I said, Doctor yeah. Who, everything else about geekdom came from ju from yeah. this one thing, this source, and seeking out and finding all these other BBC projects and stuff. Because yeah. well, like hearing about Blake Seven, yeah, Blake Seven, yeah, the, and yeah. being a kid in like the mid '80s, going, God, when will I ever get to see yeah. this? Yeah. So we had we had Doctor Who, Blake Seven, and Hitchhikers. Oh, I was in Chicago, so we, we, we had a few extras. He had some Red Dwarf, Red Dwarf in there too. Oh, see, it took me until uh, it took me to college to find Red Dwarf. Oh, I oh. never I never got Red Dwarf till yeah. college, but instantaneously loved Red Dwarf because oh, yeah. you know it's not quite Hitchhikers, but it's in that same yeah. thing, that funny sci-fi. Well, it's really funny that Peter Davidson is actually in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes. Most people don't realize that. Oh, well, it's more like the restaurant in the end of the universe. Yeah, true. He's the cow that tells you what parts to eat. I just that's amazing to me. And that's that's also a fantastic scene because you know uh, what's his face's bodyguard comes over and that's David Prowse. So yeah. Darth Vader and a Time Lord oh are, in, are standing next to each other. Yes. And your brain just kind of wants to go, what? And written by Douglas Adams. Written by Douglas Adams, who, and again, because I, I'm, so I've always watched the credits. Yeah. I'm a credit guy. If I go to a movie, even before everyone started putting things at the end, I watched yeah. the credits all the way through the first time. Everyone worked hard on that. Yeah. You're not going to remember everybody's name, but every, yeah. every now and again, you'll start to notice the names yeah. popping up similar and that's how you know that the greatest goddamn negative credit that ever existed is Mo Henry you rock Mo go girl um, but watching the credits yeah, uh, Douglas Adams yes did some work for both Doctor Who and Monty Python yeah. as well as his hitchhikers I'm like oh yeah. that guy that guy I recognize that guy but um, yeah, Doctor Who is awesome because for the longest time you would say something. You could make a joke about something, yeah. and not everyone would get it. But there was just those few people. Yes. They're like, "Oh, we have an instantaneous connection." Exactly. You understand Time Lord stuff. It's like when I made it when Bill and Ted came out, and I'm like, "Really? Yeah. A phone booth time yes, machine?" Yes, I know. Okay. And the people that would laugh along with yeah. you was like, oh, "Okay, you're cool." 
Although he had, he loved Bill. And Bill honestly, Bill. I I have to wonder if that isn't where they got the idea from. Oh, they, I'm sure. There's it, no way. Yeah, I mean, it had to be. There's just no because phone booths by that time, the full blown phone booths yeah. were not exactly still a normal thing. No, they weren't. You know, Colin Farrell's still a long time away from his. Yeah. So, yeah. so whew, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Eccleston doesn't get a lot, as much credit as he deserves. I really think it's Eccleston is what they needed to relaunch the show. I think Tennant is what they needed to carry it on and, you know, make it hip and cool. Exactly. And then Smith that. just fucking took it oh and my ran God with it. Oh God, do I love Matt Smith. Because, I'll say this. <laughs> Not every doctor has to be sold on the first episode. When they regenerate. Like, oh, it, right. Tennant didn't, but by the end of that first Matt Smith episode, when, you know, he, he questions the Atroxies, <laughs> and he's just like... Is this planet protected? Tenet, yes. And the second we started seeing all those doctors, I started to cry. I was in tears. And blown away. Well, first, going, you know, because uh, Tennant had a couple times where they showed yeah. all the doctors as well. The first time they ever showed McGann, yeah. I was like... Wow! Yeah. Really? Because yeah. the books, the books and some of the audio dramas continued him. We actually got the Time War with and, him. And the comics. And the comics. Yes, because originally they wanted, they, they had offered the Doctor Who comic the regeneration scene. But, yeah, because I, I, that's one of the things I love about the new DVDs. You get so much information that I never knew, the behind the scenes stuff. But the problem was, is there's no way to get everything issued on the same day. Because okay, sure. they they didn't want the the show and then the regeneration of the comics they you know they, they it all would have had to like happen on the same day right. but they couldn't have it happen so we didn't get the regeneration which I think would have been amazing but that just shows you how okay. cool Davies was about the whole thing he respected what happened with the comics he respected McGon as a doctor but it just didn't work out in the end that's that's, that's kind but, of strange yeah, but yeah but I mean. I, I, I think we're going to see him again soon. See, that's, I've been hoping, God, I've been hoping, when Tenet, right after time crash, yeah. uh, when the Titanic comes through, yeah. and in the very first episode of Eccleston, yeah. we saw a picture of him on the Titanic, yeah. I'm like, ooh! And there was this rumor about the two doctors, and then we got the time yeah. crash little five minute, which was awesome! Oh, because for me, Peter Davison... Is my doctor. Okay. So, and I actually had a chance to meet him, and I was absolutely speechless. It's one of the few times I could barely talk to somebody, because <laughs> I was just so speechless. But yeah, I mean, of course, again, Moffat writing that. Right. Who I think is an absolute genius. And I'm like, he's, he's the one handling the 50th anniversary, and not Davies. Yeah, oh, uh, see, Davies, great. As long as he was only writing, you know, one episode. Yes. Of, his two-parters... The first, the, I, I could never figure out why is the first episode this amazing thing, yeah. and then the second episode is oh okay, yeah. Why well, I don't I don't I can write the cliffhanger great, but I just don't know where to go. From. I mean I think I think my favorite thing about that second episode with Eggleston were the tree people. Mm. I I think they were absolutely phenomenal. I hated Cassandra. She annoyed the piss out of me. And although uh, although it was great, I think that year was like my first Dragon Con, and someone was walking around. <laughs> yes, with, I, yeah, I, I, yes right? I know exactly what you're talking about. With the Cassandra about. and yes. the whole thing spritzing, spritzing her. Yes. Like that. They were awesome. I remember that year very well. And, and again, for people, for Eccleston, give Eccleston the love. Oh, well, he wasn't as funny, and he was a dumb. Okay. The man who had been traveling for hundreds of years by himself after his race had been obliterated, and he regenerated. Yes. So yeah, he was a downer. He needed a companion. He'd been without a companion. But honestly, I don't really see him. As a to me, he really channeled a lot of Tom Baker in his performance. Yes. I mean, hands down. I mean, he reminded me so much of Baker, mm -hmm. and I absolutely, I, I loved it. I mean, you know, he could be funny. He could be serious. I mean, he could turn on a dime with his performance because you saw that a lot with Dyla. Mm -hmm. I mean, one second he's just like, you know. Wiggly ear and all happy, then the next it's like, you're a monster. I think what, what a lot of people don't get is that the few times where they had him sort of talk, the kind of where he got to go, I guess, emo if you want to go there. Yeah. You, you could see that he's like, oh, dude's been through some pain. And I, yeah. I guess people don't want to associate the doctor with that because they see him as this lighthearted ha ha. But the man has had to make some hard yeah. decisions over how many hundreds yeah. of thousands of years? He rewrote his own granddaughter's history. <laughs> I mean, people forget about that. And if you look at Sylvester McCoy, 
He, oh. They really brought some dark, dark things into him. Okay, everyone just, yeah. you know, it, no, but it's a kid show. It's not that dark. No! Kid stuff is always dark yes. and deadly and dirty, and, and that's why kids love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the reason why people hit behind the hit behind the sofa with the dialects. They don't have to go for the gore factor with Doctor Who. They just are able to pull that visceral fear out of you. Look at the silence. Look at the weeping angels. The most harmless things. Matt Smith's got to say it better than anyone else. Yeah. What's the most horrifying place in the universe? A child's bedroom. Exactly. Right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 the goodness right there. Uh, so it, it's, wow, it's such a part of, of my life. It's so weird. I, I had Flinchers after the first season with Eccleston. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you really want to see how this started? I can show you. Yeah. But you, you have to understand, it's yes. not <laughs> going to be the same. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And we watched the first Hartnell episode. Now, did you watch the pilot or did you watch the first episode? I, wow, let me think of what it exactly was. It's because, probably the first episode okay. because it's the one with the school teachers and yeah. Susan. Well, well that, that's the weird thing about the first episode. It was unheard of to get a second chance to film a pilot. The pilot is so bad. It really is. Yeah. I mean, the pilot episode is so bad. Doors weren't shutting right. They would fly back open. I mean... Show uh, Sydney had so many issues with it. He said, "You're gonna take what little money you have left over. We're gonna reshoot this." And what they came out with was so much better than that pilot. It's absolutely <laughs> amazing compared to what, what the pilot they shot. Because the pilot is atrociously bad, but the what they uh, what they actually did for the first episode is absolutely amazing. <laughs> So, you know, um, yeah, she, she wasn't ready for that. <laughs> she wasn't ready. A lot of people The hard now stuff is the most difficult stuff to go through. Because that's back when it still was the kid's show. When they're, oh, definitely. When it was the Young Indiana yeah. Jones Chronicles. And we're oh, just yeah. hiding the education in plain sight. Yeah. But hey, kids, what, look, Aztecs. What I like to tell a lot of people, because they don't realize it, this show aired the day after the Kennedy assassination. Most people don't realize how historic. And, and sometimes when I put it in that perspective, they're like, Wow. It has been around a long time. Yeah. And, and now we're up to 50 years. 50 years of Doctor Who. And I gotta say, not only did we, we lose our fandom for a while, we got it back. We got it back with a fucking vengeance. It's incredible. But you know, the beautiful thing, even when it was gone, yeah. all the geeks out there, how, there's been. Yeah. Tom Baker appeared in The Simpsons two or three times. Yes. As a little throwaway character. Yes. That I got to laugh my ass off at. Yeah. And, and, and I remember her going, what? I'm like, you wouldn't get that. <laughs> you, you know the, the the one place that just caught me off guard. I was not expecting a Doctor Who reference. The first Space Jam's movie. The <laughs> aliens <laughs> in the thing are in the trench coat, but they're wearing the scarf. I'm like <laughs> Doctor Who. I mean, I'm in the theater. I don't know why I saw this in theaters. I, maybe it's because my sister or I was. I saw it because uh, with school or something. But I was like, it's a scarf. It's the scarf! Well, Harry Potter, and it's so funny that, you know, you had that shirt on earlier. Yeah. Uh, but Harry Potter, when it starts to get me, like, why the hell is he wearing Tom Baker's scarf? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? And she's like, who's? I'm like, I, 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 I. It's, it's so great now. It's so funny to say that she's more of a geek now, because we can go back and yeah. watch things, and she'll see the jokes that were there that she had no yeah. idea were there before, because... We, did, do you watch Young Justice? Oh, I love... Yes, I, po I posted... <laughs> when I saw that episode, I was like, the first thing I did was I stopped watching the episode, I screened Captain, and posted it on the Galloway Pirate Radio website and Facebook page because I could not believe... There's a TARDIS! There's a blatant TARDIS in the freaking show. I was just like, I can't believe it. And then I get all these people commenting, I can't believe it just went there. It, it was brilliant. I, right, because you, you have to. It's That was... That was really something, something, something beautiful. Well, I'm also glad that the BBC finally realizes their are fans in America. Thank you for understanding that. Because for the longest time, they would not, they would not let Tenet fly over here for conventions or anything. Because they worried it was going, the plane was going to crash and he would die. They would have no backup plan. But now they're bringing, they're filming episodes here. They're bringing uh, Matt and you know the companions park. over. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Be in central park. I mean, they're bringing them over like two, three times a year now because they realize. But BBC, I want my freaking Easter candy. They have some of the best Doctor Who Easter candy over there. They've got some great, great stuff that, oh. We would, we would die for BBC. Sell us your stuff, I mean, please. I want to give you money. I yes. I, 
I give you money on DVDs and DVD box sets and imports. I would just want to give it to you directly. I even record the show off of BBC America now just because I'm saying thank you for bringing it over. Yes. For the love of God. Well, and I'm glad they're actually airing the British versions of the show because when it was on sci-fi, they were doing, they were doing American Americanized. edits. Yes. It's like uh, the same one with uh, The Weakest Link. There's, when did they play the song in that? I think in the American was Britney Spears song or something. Yeah. They had the, don't do that. No, don't no. change it. Give us, give us the the true Who, which I'm I'm glad they're finally realizing it, and they're actually giving us Doctor Who in its in its truest form. Finally. Yeah, we don't water down for us. We don't need it because they'll they'll do like we did. I don't know because like also you know Are You Being Served? Yes. So many times in Are You Being Served, I got her to watch Are You Being Served. She's watched that too. Every episode, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I've seen every episode of that three or four times. I don't even know. They do jokes in Are You Being Served that I don't get, but I know that they're funny, and I and I get the context yeah. of what they're going for. And she's like, well, what's a blah, blah, blah? I'm like, I don't know, but just think about that situation, what they're saying. If that's something like, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. It's still a funny thing. Exactly. And, and you, we don't need, you know, and that too many times, like, well, will they, told, will they get this? It doesn't matter if we, yeah. no. And if, especially if you're doing a sci-fi show, it doesn't matter. It's sci-fi. We'll figure out the context. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Robot dogs, man, that, that was, <sighs> god damn, that was something. School crazy. reunion. School reunion. Oh, I, that, I was in tears. I was so just out of my head when I saw Sarah Jane. Yeah. Like, oh my god. And she's like, what? And I'm like, I can tell you, but hold on, I think they're going to explain it. Let's, just, let's let them explain it. And she it. still looks so amazing. <laughs> I mean, she just so amazing. But when she died, I mean, that that, that just destroyed me. I, yeah, that was... I that was, was at work, and I heard, and I, I was done for the day. Yeah. Was, there, was, there was nothing else I could do. I was, I was absolutely heartbroken. Because it was Sarah Jane, and they had hit it so well. Nobody knew. I mean, it, was, it came out of the blue. It went, um... And I, I'm really curious to see how they're going to recognize that fact in the Who universe, like they did with the Brigadier. Oh my, I cried my flippin' eye. I just, it just yeah. started, oh, I'm just, I'm gonna dance around. I can avoid all this forever. Hey, is the Brigadier there? Oh, no, he's like, oh my god. I mean, I, and sadly, it took him a, a bit longer to recognize that he had, he, he had passed. Yeah, but they good. finally did recognize it, and... Um, I hope they don't recognize Sarah's passing in this next season. I want to see that in the 50th. Yeah. I think that's where it belongs. Yeah, it really, it really should. Because she really, for, especially for me, she's a tech, Because before Ramona showed up, yeah. Sarah Jane was running around Tom Baker. Yeah, it was awesome. Because you basically had Sarah, Leela, Ramona. The, or, and we're on the two. I mean, those Electric are... Boogaloo. Yeah. And then, and then you get the the, then you get the, the teen companions. But yeah, I mean, those were the... Those the Zan and Jaina. Yeah. Those were the Mark. three major uh, Tom Baker companions. They want... Because, uh, you know, Harry was there for a little bit. Harry was, yeah. A tiny bit. Which is yeah. interesting because we actually just watch I, I got her to watch because uh, there's so much so much of it is on Netflix now yes you know I know I love it which is awesome so you just we're sitting there one day oh, I know what it was I showed her that trailer for the 50th uh, and you know, there's all the pictures of oh, all the doctors yes, yes. and she's like okay find me a doctor let's watch one now find me an old one find me a Tom yes. Baker let's watch it now and I was like okay I know what to do so we loaded up the Ark in Space nice good time good choice yes. and uh, you know there's Harry so like, who's this guy I was like, just, it's cool and right away, at first, because you know it's much cheaper than the show now. Oh yeah. Although the show now is cheap by our comparisons, by our standards, and yeah. people don't grasp that concept. But um, when he's walking, you know, he walks out there, right there, a little thing, you know, well, this is burned down. Well, I don't think there's yeah. uh, the, the atmosphere's really not working. And 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 Sarah James goes, and Doctor, and what are you going to do? Sit there and keep playing with that yo-yo? He's like, well, Sarah, I have to test the gravity. And <laughs> and she just cracked up like we had to pause it. She's like, yes. Yeah. That is Doctor Who. Yeah. That's exactly what he would do. Yeah, or like before, especially with Baker, he had he added a lot of quirks to the role. Like he would have to listen to his drink before he drank it because he had to know what the drink had to say first before he consumed <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, no, I mean that's. I mean it's just it's amazing when people find Doctor Who and they end up loving it. It's just it's just an amazing show, and it's weird now that there's so many people that are finding Doctor Who. Like the new stuff, they didn't get it. They didn't watch it on PBS originally. So it's, it's, I, it's 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 really strange that we're getting a generation now that never watched it on PBS. The greatest thing ever, um, this past Halloween, 
this kid is eight years old. And he comes walking up with his bow tie oh, and, his yes. and, his, and his sonic screwdriver. That is awesome. And I'm like, oh my god, dude. <laughs> yes. No other house on the block really got it. Yes. But I was like, dude. And I ran inside and grabbed, you know, my yes. sonic screwdriver. Yes. If you have the blue David Tennant sonic screwdriver, you have Christopher Eccleston sonic screwdriver. Yes. Because Tennant didn't get a new one. No, he didn't. He didn't even get a new TARDIS. No, he did not. He got nothing new. He was all hand me downs. And I'm, you know, there's a buddy of mine, his girl, she's, you know, big into this. This was our way of getting her into yeah. geekdom, was Doctor Who, because she fell in love with this concept, because yeah. how could you not? And I'm like, and I love to tell her, because she's all about her David Tennant. I'm like, okay, I liked David Tennant, but stop going on about it. What about Eccleston? Blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, what what sonic screwdriver is that? It's like, oh, I've got David Tennant. It's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. So, so if you're gonna introduce somebody to Doctor Who, what episodes do you like to show them first? <sighs> wow, I I kind of hate to say it, but honestly, I I think Eccleston and Rose for someone that's never seen it, I I I do think that is a fantastic jumping off point because anything else is gonna be too slow and creaky what? for them. Well, the, the two that I do okay. are Blink. Oops. Yes. Because it's a Dr. Light episode. It might seem weird to show people that. Okay. But okay. people, because it then hooks people. Right. Because they're interested because you really don't know a lot about the Doctor. And actually, the first Matt Smith episode. The first Matt Smith episode it probably is a very good way to do that episode. Th those, are, those are the two that, that I like to show. Because, I don't know, something with the Eccleston stuff... Um, I think people are better off to experience, or at least in, in, with the people I've talked to, are better off experience, uh, experiencing a little bit of Tennant or Smith before they jump into Eccleston. Because um, for some people, they don't get what Eccleston's doing. Okay, thanks. Um, I but I mean, I absolutely love Rose. I mean, but I mean, I appreciate Eccleston. And I love the fact that he did not really publicly speak about his time with Doctor Who until after his original contract ended. Because he was actually signed for like four seasons. And he actually did not say anything about the show, really, until after that contract ran out. Why, dude? Why? Why? His, 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 his issues were he wasn't used to the shooting schedule. He was absolutely miserable. But he wanted to do this to, for Davies because they were friends. Uh, but he, it was very harsh. It was very hard on him. Because he was used to movies or miniseries. He wasn't used to a... 12, 13 episode oh, season. Dude, I know, but dude, Eccleston. And it's really sad that he's the one guy that will not come back for the 50th. Which, why? why? He's pulling a Baker. Right, why he's are you really, thinking Tom Baker? Exactly. It's, 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 it's killing me because, I mean, it was funny in that panel I was on early today, they were talking about the 50th, and I'm like, guys, have you not listened to what Moffat has said? I mean, have you not picked up on what he's saying? I mean, he, he has basically contacted just about everybody. And everybody's like, yes, are we going to have a multi-doctor episode in the 50th? Yes, we are. I mean, are we going to have visits from a lot of the old companions? Yes, we are. I mean, hell, they were going to have Ace on oh. Sarah Jane Adventures oh. before she passed. Oh, my God. I mean, there was a lot planned. I mean, they don't realize. I mean, it's just like it, it's out there, but it was driving me crazy that, you know, these people are on this panel, and I'm like, do I really want to ruin all this stuff, stuff for them that, that I know about? You might as well, I mean. I mean, I, I figure that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow on my panel. My, my dream, <laughs> my dream is that the 50th, I don't mind if they just take old footage and find a way to splice it all and give me one great big adventure with everybody. I, I would love <laughs> the hell out of that because... I'm not going to care that it's clips from old stuff, and everyone else is going to know. Well, there's actually been talk about... The, the hardest one is Hart now, because I don't really think he has any children. But from what I understand, both uh, Troutons and John Pertwee's sons look awfully lot like them. Because, I mean, Pertwee's son was in uh, that horrible Camelot TV show on Stars, oh. <laughs> uh, playing Arthur's We're going to beat Game of Thrones to the screen. Ha! And... He looked like Pertwee. I mean, you throw him in a wig or get him, get him, grow his hair out. I think it'd be amazing because I think that's the only way you can actually bring any of those guys back. You can't pull what they did with the first Doctor and the Five Doctors, get another actor. Yeah. You need something more. Like with Jenny, the only way they were able to pull that off was they actually got 
the doctor's daughter to play that part. It's the only way <laughs> they can get away with something like that. Good stuff. Good stuff. I mean, but yeah, I just, I mean, we're so lucky. Fifth. The years of Doctor Who. It's like everything else in Geek, the rest of the world is starting to understand what we've known for decades. Yes, I know. I just, I, I absolutely can't wait. The, the, the best example I can give to this for mainstream yeah. people is uh, in, like in the early 90s, I'm doing college radio. And this little band named Nirvana used to come to Wilmington, <laughs> North Carolina all the time. <laughs> yes. And yes, play it like, with the Ice House on Front yes. Street, you know what I'm saying it was? And that's where I grew up. Oh so I know God. the Ice House, okay, I know those places. So uh, the they, Bad Monk. Oh, see? Yes. They, they cut a the legal ID for us and everything. Yes. And, and, I'm, and I'm going around pl trying to play this for all my friends. Listen to this, listen to this. And then a year later, Billboard, they're the number one yeah. album. And I've got these same people going, oh my God, dude, have you heard this? I'm like, yes! <laughs> this is Nirv I tried to get you to listen to this a year ago. We can, I'll say this about Nirvana. I hated the shit that he played on the radio for them. But their B side stuff is was absolutely amazing, and, and yeah, and you know, Doctor is the same way now. Where people, I've had someone ask me, "Hey, do you, <laughs> watch, you watch Doctor?" I'm like, do I watch? I, God damn it, do I watch Doctor Who? I love it when people, you know, ask me Doctor Who stuff. You know about this Doctor Who show? I'm like, really? Do you really <laughs> want me to go into this? A, a friend of mine, uh, he's the one that told me that, that it was coming back because, you know, we our geeky stuff, we were talking Lost and everything yeah. else. And he's like, so Doctor Who? I'm like, yeah, Doctor Who, what about it? He's like, you know they're doing a new one? I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, God. And, and, and I, I sent him an email or something, and I typed it out, and it was so funny. He's like, oh, wow, you do like the show. You didn't actually type Doctor Dr. Dot <laughs> yeah. Who. I'm like, no, that's not the name <laughs> of the show. It's not a title like <laughs> that, you jackass. So we 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 span quite a bit of your fandom with who. What are you currently doing? What, what do you want to plug? What do you want these people at, at home, the all of five well, that might be watching this, right. um, um, to know about what you're doing? What, what what they might see you being doing next? I mean, what what is the great Billy Flynn <laughs> up to next? Uh, well, you know, currently we've, we've still got the sometimes weekly award non-winning podcast uh, over at GeekRadioDaily.com. Ding. Which, for those of you who are asking, yes, it did used to be a daily show, but after two and a half years, uh, yeah. anyway, and all our <laughs> drops say Geek Radio Daily, so I can't change the name of the show. Yeah. I can't change the show. Also, currently, I am, I am the announcer for the River City Roller Girls uh, roller derby team. Nice. Which is awesome, because, uh, you know, I get to sit up my butt and run my mouth, which is something my dad said no one would ever pay me to do. Ha <laughs> <laughs> oh, dad. Uh, I worry about that. And you do it so well. Uh, thank you. Uh, you can also find me over at uh, Sci-Fi Audio. Uh, this, that's P-S-I-P-H-I, -I, Sci-Fi Audio. See what they did there? Yes, I do. Uh, they have quite a few comedic shows. I got to play a Farina game show host one time. I but can see that. That's good times indeed. <laughs> I can see but, that. But uh, there's also a regular series on there, uh, Star Trek Miami. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is a Star Trek series that is somewhat comedical, but it does. It's not this over the top. It is a Star Trek vessel, and uh, I am Captain Everett of the USS Tim, and we are the ship. As, as I like to say, that uh, there were lots. There were, there were a lot of ships they could have sent out there to do that, but we were the closest ones, and they thought we were the best for the job. It's that. It's that kind of ship. Yeah. It's the ship that no one's gonna miss. <laughs> and uh, you know, I get to it. I, I like to call. I like to call him a smart Zap Brannigan. Nice. Because he's not dumb. He does care about his crew, but uh, when he's giving those captain's logs, yes, he's really playing it up. You know that little moment. Yeah. And well, I, I'm going to go and say maybe a little more Picardish in the fact that he'll let other people. For instance, the our Halloween episode, and um, which we learned the horrible truth of the secret of candy corn. Of the origins of candy corn. Really? Oh, it's it's a horrible thing. We're on the space station, uh, so we've got this candy corn weirdness. We've got some spectral ghost anomaly kind of things as well. So I'm talking to my crew, and I'm like, okay, I need you to go down into the hold and investigate the the candy corn thing. See if there's any word about where this stuff has gone. Find something. I need you to go upstairs and see about this whole ghostly apparition thing. We're gonna find that out. Doctor Handy and I are gonna be at the bar. It's a good plan. I like. I like that plan. <laughs> it's actually, actually, that's it's a great a, plan. It's a good plan. Uh, yes. And we just did, depending on when you see this, uh, episode, our latest episode, our Mirror Universe episode, is coming out nice. very, very shortly. And I'm gonna get the title of this wrong, but uh, there's too many Davids in my life. There's too many Daves. There's yes. Lots of Daves. Uh, Dave writes this, and uh, this is called. I want to say it's called 
Through the Parallel Looking Glass Mirror Darkly is the name of this episode. Oh my which God. is every every Trek <laughs> yes. mirror episode title meshed together. With a little bit of Alice in Wonderland in there. Just a little tiny bit yes. of thing there. Uh, so that, I'm actually going out in the world and doing some real acting because since I'm no longer a full-time radio guy, hey, anyone need a radio professional? Um, <laughs> I'm filling my time working part-time at a radio station and I've been actually doing some acting gigs. Uh, three weeks ago I was in a play. Nice. Two weeks ago I got to play a guy in a corporate video, in a corporate training video. Oh, nice. About racism. <laughs> hey, kids. Uh, which was fun. Were and you the black guy? I was not. It's it's it was weird. The the guy he's like <laughs> the director's like I know these kind of things can be boring, but she has a way of making them actually interesting and different. And I'm yeah. like, okay, dude, whatever. But as it turns out, uh, there is a white supervisor guy who's ignorantly racist. <laughs> you know, he's, he says things like, "Hey, come here, boy," without realizing oh you're talking God. to a black guy, <laughs> or he says something like, "Well, you're pretty fast. You must have played football in high school." Just shit like yes. that. Um, but there's there's two black guys actually, yeah. and this guy is the new black guy to the to the workplace, and the other black guy who's there, the new black guy like reads books, yes, and is a little more edgy, whatever, yeah. and so the other black guy doesn't like him, so he's the <laughs> one that actually has really the problem with him. Wow. Yeah, it's, and I'm like, and this is for a corporate training video that no one's ever going to see, and it's got a lot more thought into it than many, many things I have seen. Yes. Wow. So, uh, which acting, uh, freelance, freelance uh, you know, audio editing, yes. uh, trying to catch everybody up on Mr. Adventures since we're behind. Yes, Mr. Adventures. But we're going to catch up on that. I'm excited. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yes, we are. I've got, actually got, uh, there's an episode, I think, ready to release on my laptop. Which really? is back at my house right now. I'm, I'm excited. Oh, God. Okay. Wow. Well, that's, a, that's a good thing, because I hear, like, maybe a Mr. Adventure book's coming out about the same time. Really? Yes, really. Wow, it's corporate synergy. Yeah, exactly. That I know, that's pretty amazing. So, you know, other than that, um, I might have to actually break down and buy a PlayStation 3. You don't have a PlayStation 3? No, I don't. Really? Yes. I'm shocked. I had a PlayStation. I did not, the PlayStation Two. Wow, do you you want this story? This yes, is, okay. yeah. The Dreamcast by Sega. Oh, I love the Dreamcast. Was the first video game system we had where the games looked better than they did in the arcade. Yes. Because Soul Calibur, I was like, what? And I went to the arcade the next day because I'm like, and I'm looking, I'm like, oh my god, it doesn't look as good. Oh my, Crazy Taxi runs faster on the Dreamcast. Yes. So I was working at Circuit City at the time, and our Sony rep comes in and slaps down the spec sheet for the PlayStation Two. Yeah. And I'm looking at the sheet, and I'm like, wait, 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 no, no, the core processor is still the same processor from the PlayStation, originally, yeah. you know that means? So you've got a processor handling graphics, a processor handling sound, this is the Sega Saturn, is what this is, and Sega learned from that. Yeah. And they told everybody, don't, don't buy this, don't, no, wait for us, because we're PlayStation. And it comes out, and it wasn't that impressive a system. And it took a year for good games to happen. Yep, because they decided not to program in C. That was a great <laughs> thing about the original PlayStation, because I actually worked at Babbage's. See? So, I mean, Have yeah, I mean, that was, that was in the back when we act, back when they actually sold uh, productivity software and we had to wear ties and everything. <laughs> um, it's like, the PlayStation was genius because everything was written in C. Everybody could program for system. it. Amazing. And then PlayStation 2, they're like, let's throw that out the window and use this proprietary programming yeah. language. And what's even yeah. better is, you know, they're out and then Xbox goes to come out. And yeah. I'm like, I'm not doing this until I went to one of these Xbox training events yeah. in Circuit City and got to play five minutes of Halo and went, oh, no, no, I kind of want one of these. <laughs> and so much like my beloved Dreamcast, it had a modem built in, broadband yes. built in. It had a hard drive, which my Dreamcast had the lovely V yes. with the screen. Yes. And right at the same month it's coming out, the PlayStation 2 was going to be releasing their modem, broadband modem adapter, yeah. and their hard drive, which now made the PlayStation 2 cost more yes. than the Xbox did that came with all of that. Yes. And I'll never forget, Tony Hawk had an online game that came out, and there was no modem to buy because mm. they pulled it. For a year, because they didn't care. They yeah. didn't care anymore. No, they didn't. And so the PlayStation 3, it was, it was like to me, it was the same kind of crap, and it was really just used to sell Blu-ray. Blu-ray didn't win. It didn't win. HD DVD would have won. It would have won. But when you've got a motion picture company, you've got an electronics company, you've got a video game company, and you can tie all of it in. God, how is th that is such... That's bullshit, man. <laughs> <laughs> bullshit. 
But that's what sold me on the PlayStation Three was the Blu-ray. See, no, no. At that point, I was like, no. Well, I mean, I had no Sony. I had waited a while because I wanted to see who was going to win the HD DVD or the Blu-ray. You, you have to admit. And I waited. You have to admit that Mm -hmm. in my right mind of thinking, Sony wasn't going to win because they never won Format War. (laughs) How do you like your beta and high eight, kids? Uh, (laughs) So I don't have a PlayStation Three because Xbox Three Sixty. I don't care what you say about Xbox Live. It runs, it works, and paying 50 bucks a year for it's fine. 100 bucks for four people is even better. Look into it, kids. It's great, great, great stuff. But I will have to get a PlayStation 3 because they're making a Doctor Who game. Yes, I cannot wait for that to come out. The Eternity Clock. Yes, which actually has already been pushed back. Which, yes. strangely enough, you know who's helping make that game? Who would that be? Sega. What? <laughs> yes, Sega is helping make that game. God. Damn you, Sony. I mean, because you, you brought up... um. You know, Dreamcast. I can't only... Yeah, yeah. That's just really funny. It's it's great. Yes. So yeah, we'll have to get... So no, I'm an, I'm an Xbox guy. Yeah. I have a Nintendo because I don't call it by the name that everyone... The name they gave it because it's a dumbass name. <laughs> yes, it was. It's a dumbass name. It was yeah. supposed to be the Nintendo Revolution. That's a good name. That would have been so yeah, much okay. better. You know, if Sega had kept the Katana as the name instead of Dreamcast, yeah. I think we'd have a different video game world now. And it wouldn't surprise me. I, honestly, I miss my Sega. I, my, my very first video game system after the Atari 2600... Was the Sega Master System, not the Nintendo. Okay. My uh, brother had the Master System and I had the NES. That's yeah. how, that's yeah, how but Yeah, I, I had the Master System and I played Fantasy Star and that game was just... That's what told me about role-playing games. And that's those are my favorite favorite to this day. See, but NES, uh, Dragon, Dragon Quest, Quest and, and, and Final then, Fantasy. And my brother got Final Fantasy. Yes. And if he hasn't thrown it away, I think he still has the original cartridge and I think he still has the world map. And I'm like, yes. dude, I told him five, six years ago... What I saw, I was like, dude, lock this up somewhere. That's going to yeah. pay for a kid's <laughs> college yeah. someday. Because Jesus, people love that stuff. So, we, we we have, I think this is one of our longest interviews. Oh. Do you have anything else to say so we can get back and partying? Because we are actually at Ravencon. We are. And we are killing good partying time right now. We, well. <laughs> I am right now. You are. Yes. I'm making it work. Um, no, it's it's wonderful. It's awesome. I don't care that they kind of got rid of the limitation for the number of regenerations they had to. in Sarah Jane's show and not Doctor Who show. I don't know if people even who started watching with Eccleston, if they even know of that. I don't Unless think they've they, been told by someone. I like don't Europe. really think they do because um, it's never really been brought up in New Who. No, no. It really hasn't. Not in that Sarah Jane episode. Which it really hasn't. Not. And honestly, the Doctor has already broken that rule. Because if you look at the brains of Mobius, you see like five different regenerations in that episode alone. Well, if it was, uh, yes, yes, no, yes, yeah. yeah but, I, but it doesn't matter because the five doctors say they, they blatantly say, "Oh, master, if you help the doctor, we'll restore your regenerations." So it's so, yeah. Boom. So there it is. Exactly. So, but I, I think it's going to be there for a while. I'm going to be sad when Moffat leaves. Whoever comes in, no matter how good they are, I'm going to be sad because Davies, thank you for bringing it back. Yeah. But one of the episodes we know and love the most from your run, Moffat and Cornell. You know, Girl, Girl in the Fireplace is a fantastic yes. episode to introduce people to as well. Oh, that's, exactly. I that's, yes, that's, I, that's I really, agree. Because that'll make <laughs> them just go, whoa, what? Yeah, because honestly, I was really wondering what they were going to do after school reunion. And holy shit, they brought it. <laughs> they brought it. And you know she's coming back. Really? The actress that played Madame the Pompadour is coming back. But nobody knows who she's playing. I mean, there's a chance she might be playing Madame de Pompadour again. See, and that would be awesome. And there's also, there's other, what I'm hoping that we will see. Of course, we want the big, huge crossover. Yes. Of course, we want a multi-doctor episode. But I'd like to know some other things like, um, hey, does does uh, Timothy Dalton really have a speech impediment that makes him spit a lot like that? <laughs> I want to know this. I want to know, was that... The doctor's wife, mom, who, I mean, you said all this stuff. Oh, God, there's so many. There's so many things just hanging out there. I don't think they're ever going to touch who that was because that was Davies and not Moffat. See, and that's. Because, I mean, I've heard everything from Susan to Donna to Ramona to the doctor's father. I totally thought Susan right away was my first thought on that. And I'm going to stick with that because Davies isn't going to come back to tell me different. No. No, we'll never find out who that was. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Do you think we'll ever get to see the Doctor's Daughter again? Is she going to get a show? Yes, actually, I don't know if she's going to get a show, but the reason why we haven't seen her yet was the pregnancy. Right. Um, Because Moffat was the one that stopped um, her death. Because in the original script, she dies. Hmm. That that, uh, Davies had. But Moffat was like, no, I want her. 
So that's the reason why she regenerated into herself, because that's, I guess, the way she's going to regenerate. She has, what, 13 lives or whatever they're going to give her. But, um, yeah, no, uh, she is, uh, she's still around because of Moffat. So we, at the very least, we're going to see her on the 50th. But you know the weird thing about that? That says that, sure, they have control over their regeneration somewhat, which means Peter Davison <laughs> willingly chose to become a big... Yes, and I don't well, think anyone. Would. Well, no, I mean, they, I'm they, sorry, Colin. We love you. They actually did say that. I mean, they do have like Ramona chose to look like Ramona too, and she wasn't even dying. She just chose to regenerate into that. And and, and yet, both uh, Tennant and Smith have been surprised to learn that they're still not gingers. Because I, I think the doctor just leaves the ram. Chains. What happened? Let's see. exactly. Let's see what happens. And I think that's the way they handle the regenerations. Um, they're just you know, by the fly, because the only doctor that was actually ever concerned about what he was going to turn into was the second doctor, when they were giving him his choices. No, no, that one's too old, that one's too ugly, that one has a big nose, I do not want that. But yeah, I mean, that's the only doctor that's ever been concerned about his regeneration. The rest have just been like, whatever. Uh, you know, obviously, obviously, <laughs> we love Dumb yes, I mean it, it's it's show. painfully obvious. It's it's go it was there before us. It's go it it's going to be around after us. I I hope to God it is. You know it it absolutely is, and, and I think you could jump in at any point. There's going to be legions of kids, you know, new families. Yes, I, I can't wait for the day you know when you get you know when you have the five generations of a family sitting yes. down to watch oh, Doctor Who. That would be amazing. That would just that would just be one of the greatest yeah. things that just ever existed. Yeah, and you know what? Even if you watch the Peter Cushing ones, I wouldn't. Mind. Well, after, after, actually, Moffat did say that's all canon. Yeah, oh, there I, was I, a beautiful one where they some uh, I forget what little comic book thing it was, yeah. but they had oh yeah, the guy who wrote the I uh, one, one of the writers was dying, and they had like all the doctors, including Cushing, yeah. show up, which was like oh okay, which that's yeah. just too weird. But no, that, that, was, that was interesting. Moffat said that everything is canonical. Um, and of course, because he rebooted everything in the Big Bang too. <laughs> I mean, so, it all works. Which is good. And yeah. So you know, if, if you're if you are new to Who, yeah. if you're someone new you're jumping on, go back and watch all of your favorite shows. You'd be yes. astounded to learn where there are Doctor Who references. references. Yes, whether it's a sound, uh, that whether it's a phone booth, yes. that's a time machine. No matter long scarf, it doesn't matter. Yes. There are a ton, or just the Doctor themselves popping up in the Simpsons. Yes, there are tons of references, and you can go back and go, oh my God, that's just really 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 Family really Guy even. Family in their Star Wars episode. The Star Wars episode. <laughs> I which, love that. Which was awesome because that's that's another moment where that happens, and I start dying laughing, yeah. and she and she's like, "What?" And I'm like, "You're gonna get there one day. Yes. I promise you." I love you, Seth MacFarlane, and your Blue Harvest. <laughs> but yes, um, we'll we'll kill this so we can actually get back to drinking. Yes, and partying. Right. And partying. Um, so this is GPR signing off. Yo yo yo. Yes. What is this? That's what I always do to sign off. Okay. I give him the peace sign. You know, I don't think I've ever watched. I've only listened. And That's you, fine. You can't hear this. You can't hear the peace sign. No, you can't. <laughs> Unless you go, peace. Yes, peace. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm glad you asked me that, since you're sitting next to me as I'm looking in the camera. Yes, okay. <laughs>